Hi everybody, welcome back to Azure DWF channel. In today's video, I'll show all the repairs needed to completely restore one of my Asteroids arcade PCBs. This is the oldest of the two boards. It is a Dash 02 revision and it was tested on April 14th, 1980. This could be a serial number, so this board will be 97,213. If you haven't seen the video where I showed all the preliminary repairs on the two boards, I recommend watching it first, a link to it is in this video description. Before continuing, let me introduce the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. I have realized many of my projects with JLC PCB. They make good quality PCBs at amazing prices. Whether you are a hobbyist or a professional electronic engineer, JLC PCB can suit your needs for fast and high quality PCBs. You can use your favorite design tool and submit the Gerber files on their website. Or you can use the online design and simulation tools that are very convenient. Or you can simply submit the design files of any shared project. And after that, you just get the PCBs delivered at your door. So be sure to check the website for latest prices and offers. The link is in the description down below. JLC PCB recommended from a long time satisfied customer. If you follow my channel, you probably know that I first needed to make a suitable power supply to power the Asteroids game boards. On the first part of this board repair, I didn't yet have an audio amplifier, so there won't be game sound effects. I'm looking with the oscilloscope at the X, Y and Z video game outputs. And there is some activity on the Y output. But the X deflection output shows no activity. However, the Z signal, which is the video brightness output, seems working fine. The first thing to troubleshoot is then the missing X deflection signal. This is the relevant part of the X output circuitry. UD11 is a 10 bit digital to analog converter. Its output then goes to some operational amplifiers and analog switches. The first good point to check for a signal is UC12 pin 7. Every time I put the probe on UC12 pin 7, however, I could only find a DC level, either a negative or a positive one, and always at the same two voltages. It seemed to be jumping between them randomly. When an operational amplifier output just seems going to only two DC levels, it's not probably bad. This is the exact symptom of a missing negative feedback path. In our case, the negative feedback is provided by the 15 kilo ohms resistor that is connected between pin 7 and pin 6. This resistor, however, has no reference number, which is weird. In fact, measuring the resistance between pins 7 and 6 of UC12 gives an open circuit. By the way, in a previous repair attempt, UC12 and UD12 were socketed and probably replaced, but that did not solve the fault, obviously. Since I have two boards, I could measure the actual feedback resistance of about 7.5 kilo ohms. As we saw, the feedback resistor has no reference number, so I started following the PCB traces from UC12 pins in search of it. However, both pins eventually arrived at some pins of the digital to analog converter IC, which is the AD561. Looking at this datasheet, I learned that the feedback resistor is contained into the integrated circuit itself. I've measured a not good IC and indeed it has the internal 5 kilo ohms resistor. However, on the faulty board I could not measure any resistance, so this AD561 must be substituted. So I've just cut all the pins to reduce any risk of damaging the PCB. Then I removed all the pins one by one and finally checked that no pads or traces were damaged. 
at the end solder the socket and installed an Angood AD561. So now I can reconnect the board and see what happens. There is some activity on the X deflection now, so let's switch to XY mode. Hmm, there are other issues with this board it seems. The game is attempting to display the attract mode but something goes wrong and probably the watchdog reset kicks in and it starts again. Let's try to switch to test mode. Interesting, the test shows no errors. Since the test screen is showing no errors, it means that probably all the ROMs and RAMs are working. More likely, the fault is in the vector generator state machine logic. In the Atari vector arcades, the vector generator is almost as complex as a CPU itself, but it's made with discrete TTL integrated circuits, so it's not very easy to troubleshoot. In this video description, I've linked a very good video explanation of how the Atari vector state machine works. As with any other CPU troubleshooting, I decided to begin with the clock circuitry. So I started looking at the signals on this part of the schematic, hoping to find some clue. And here's what I found when checking UA7. Pin 13, always high, so it's correct. Pin 12, hmm, this is not a valid lever, definitely. Pin 11 is a clock and is correct. Pin 10 also seems ok. Pin 9 is always high, but because of the missing input. Pin 8 is always low, also because of the missing input. The voltage lever I measured on pin 12 is typical of a floating input. In this case, this should be driven by the signal named VMEM. So I searched in the schematic where this signal is generated, and it's one of the outputs of UE4. However, a quick test with the multimeter showed that in my PCB, pin 12 of UA7 and pin 10 of UE4 don't show any continuity. So I started following the trace from UA7 pin 12, flipping the board at each via, and checking that I still had continuity with the integrated circuit pin. Eventually the trace arrives at this via, where I still could measure correct continuity. The trace then passes under UC4, but on the other side of this IC I couldn't find any continuity anymore. As you can see, UC4 is quite abused by the previous person that attempted to repair this board. I have tried to address the most evident problems when I first inspected the two asteroids boards, but I couldn't check under the ICs for broken traces, obviously. The two yellow wires were needed at the first inspection to restore some lost pads and traces. Now I added the brown wire to reconnect the missing pad that was going under UC4. And by the way, I tried to clear all the brown goo around the pins, but that substance resisted to all the solvents I have attempted to use. Anyway, I can now check that I have restored the intended continuity and then power on the game again. And yes, this is the correct attract mode. I still have no audio amplifier, but I can coin up the game and start some play. And so far, everything looks good. The game looks fine, but we can clearly notice the clicky sound in place of the so-called thump that is played during all the game. Our other sounds though seem working fine.
The thumb sound is generated by this circuit. The CPU writes 5 bits into even 7 latch. Bit 4 enables or disables the sound and bits from 0 to 3 determine the sound's pitch. The actual waveform is then produced by a 555 timer working as a square wave oscillator and the square wave is then smoothed by a simple resistor and capacitor low pass filter. Since usually the 555 ICs are very reliable, I have first decided to check that ION7 produces the right outputs. I found no issues on even 7 so I then checked Q2 and associated resistors, as they can be easily checked in circuit with the multimeter, and found no issues here too. CR2 and R49 were also verified in circuit, and there was nothing wrong with them too. Then I verified C33 and R51, and even these two showed no issues. At this point it could almost be only the 555 itself and I finally decided to pull it and substitute it with a new one. Hmm. Now we have the thump back, but I'm sure it sounds really bad. It's more like a quack, as if the square wave is not smoothed at all. I've also tried a few different 555 SEs, but this thing never sounds better. I've checked in secret both R74 and C64, but they showed the correct values, so it is a real mystery, and so much a mystery that I started comparing the audio waveform between this asteroid board and the other one I have. In fact, on this board the thumb sound looked like a square wave even after the low pass filter. How is that even possible? Finally, I found a difference between the two PCBs. See the little trace between R74 and C64 here? This is the dash 02 PCB with the quacky sound. Here is instead the dash 04 PCB and that link between R74 and C64 is not there anymore. So what's going on here? Looks like Atari made a mistake on the dash 02 PCB. Here I've drawn both circuits side by side. On the left there is the intended circuit where the square wave output of the 555 is smoothed by an RC low pass filter. Notice how the maximum current that the 555 must sink or source is about 1.5 million pairs because the 3.3 kilo ohms resistor is in series to the IC's output pin. The circuit on the right is instead what has been implemented on the dash 02 PCB. The capacitor has been connected on the wrong side of the resistor. In this situation, there is not a low pass effect on the square wave anymore, and that's why the thump sound is so raw, but this has another side effect. Since there is no serious resistor before the capacitor, the 555 tries to sync or source all the current it is capable of at each square wave transition. According to the datasheet, the maximum current is more than 100 mA, but this makes the integrated circuit operate very quickly and eventually it will fail, as in fact happens on this board. The fix in this case is simple, I've cut the trace that connects C64 to the wrong side of R74. Then I added a small jumper to connect C64 to the other end of R74. A 
Okay, now it sounds better. I put a few clips of sounds before and after the fix, so you can hear the difference. Because the game and sounds seem now working fine, I've tested all the game inputs. Everything looks good. This board is finally repaired, and one factory mistake has been corrected too. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. It's all for now, have a nice time and thank you for watching.